what I, what I was trying to explain in 10 minutes over there was that the, the internet is fragile. And it's fragile because of the, because of it, not only because of its history, but also because of the in, intense and immense number of devices and um, things that connect to it. Over the next probably five years, we're going to reach orders of magnitude of 10 trillion devices. When these devices are there, each device is a way to get into any other device. So I can technically take, let's say, my, um, my drone, which is connected to the internet, and attack a computer that's connected to the house of person X. So they're all connected. And all these protocols are unknown to each other. I also demonstrated over there that there are a lot of bad people on the internet, but on the same time, there's also a lot of good people. We need to be able to do two things as a society. One of that is to defend our way of life. But on the other hand, we need to also be able to listen to the bad guys who, are, who don't really want to do anything good to us. Um, and that to me is a birthing, because that, there is a technical solution to such a problem. There are political issues, but I think we have the opportunity to build great new tools to power an internet that is safe for everybody, at the same time preserving all our privacy and our freedoms. You, the truth of the matter is I don't trust any government to actually come up with a solution. Uh, I think the private sector is actually going to lead this, and that's where I find the beginnings of a new internet possible. I think there's enough technologists and engineers and an entrepreneurs and venture capital out there to be able to solve this very critical problem. Unfortunately, most of the tools out there right now are also built on old technology. I'll give you an example. Uh, virus, antivirus uh, software is the same antivirus software you used 15 years ago, is the same antivirus software you're using today. Um, and the fact of the matter is, this is an unsolved problem at this point. It needs to be solved, and that's why I'm fairly optimistic that we're going to give birth to a new internet in the next, probably in the next two years. One of the products we, I, in a, is the company that I co-founded is called the Avagant Glyph, and what the Glyph is, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a high fidelity headphone, like a, uh, much like you would see in a Bose or other high quality headset, but then you flip down the monitor, there's a uh, the strap. When you flip it down, there's high definition television like you're watching an 80, 80 inch screen six feet away from you. Uh, it doesn't really link per se, but it is obviously connected to the internet and has such even, um, you know, all these, it's not, just the glyph, but every device that connects to the internet, again, is a door, is a, is a pathway to everything else on the internet. By the nature of this conference, this is an optimistic, high energy conference. It, I'm not so sure there's a lot of people here worrying about, you know, the next internet attack. That said, I think my talk was to show people that there are opportunities, entrepreneurial opportunities out there. And who knows, there might be somebody in that room that just decided, I'm going to do this. And if that happens, I, I could be happier.